Okay, good morning, everybody. It's Monday. I have no idea what day it is. Um, I'm, I want to say that it's like, I don't even know. What day is it, guys? It's Monday. It's I know it's Monday, but what day is it? Claudia, what's the date? <laughs> Tell me. I just literally can't. I cannot even. <laughs> pretty soon, like, well, not pretty soon. It seems like all I know is, is uh, Mondays. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Okay, thank you, everybody. So it's Monday, May 17th, and we are finishing up tourist season, which I keep telling you every single day so you couldn't possibly forget, right? But there's a reason. Tourist season is this like, it's like the last few bits of collecting some rest and integration from all of the big learning and things from that Scorpio full moon. May has not been without event. Actually, no month has been, but we're, we're ramping up for the split in June. And I sent out a, um, <laughs> I sent out an email, I believe, and a message or a post, whatever, that on Thursday, we're going to be channeling, we're doing a live channeling, and the subject is going to be the split. So we'll put that question to the Purple Crescent and see what information comes through, see what, see what downloads come through about what on earth is going on in June besides the, um, besides the equinox, right? So, or solstice. So with the last few days of tourist season, what is going on with you? Like what feelings are you having? What emotions are coming up? Have you been really immersing yourself in some serious self care and have you rewired yourself to understand what that is? As we become more aware of ourselves as energetic beings, it no longer feels good to follow a mechanical schedule of care. We aren't linear beings. We aren't, and especially us women, are not made to be on this 24 hour time schedule. So are you finding ways to make your world work for you instead of allowing yourself to be pummeled by the demands of a societal schedule that does not work with you in an organic or energetic way. What are you doing? How are you shifting that for yourself? And how are you believing in yourself more and trusting your own intuition and trusting your body? Because those are gonna be the checkpoints as we continue to move through this year, you, your feelings are going to be your navigation, your compass. And when the world around you start to starts to look and continues to look more and more unfamiliar as the territories you enter are more new and you know just strange to you, your inner guidance system is all you're gonna be able to rely on. So you better be finding that thing and, and touching base and saying like, hey, remember me? Because we need to do this together. That's going to be really important, guys, because this is all new stuff. We signed up for it. So we don't have to worry necessarily because we definitely signed up for this one. But at the same time, just because you signed up for it doesn't mean you don't have to step up in your integration. It doesn't mean you don't have to step up in your understanding and opening and receiving, right? So this this last few the last few threads of tour season are really asking you that question: Have you re-entered your body space as if it is a temple? Have you anointed your own threshold? Have you got down on your knees at your own altar? Have you brought yourself sweets and beautiful things and sparkly jewels to make yourself feel worthy of receiving your own love, right? Are you doing that? Are you treating yourself that way Are, as, a, as a vessel of the divine, as an instrument that is so fine and so rare, there is nothing else like it anywhere. So you better really take care of that thing. Um, that's what you're being asked right now. So sit with that 
for the next few days and really ask yourself how you how you are implementing that that your self-care is not a joke anymore this is not like a a side note this is not oh it'd be nice if i have time this is your job because if you are not immersed in some serious serious self-care you are going to be energetically overwhelmed as we continue to move through this year and if you are at times feeling energetically overwhelmed now what are you doing to give yourself a little more bandwidth what what space is being taken up that you don't even realize is being taken up using you know my computer um as an example i have a lot of programs running in the background that i may or may not be using anymore it's time to go into your background and see what programs are running that you're not even using and don't even know are open but are taking up a lot of your bandwidth okay so where are they in what can you find the x and click out of them if you need to enter into that energetic space again go open the program but you don't need it to be running all the time you really need all of your energy right here for you and not running on autopilot servicing places that don't need your energy to begin with so being really mindful of where your energy is going and with that in mind you know we're we're moving into more of an opening um, of of community of the collective community as restrictions are being lifted and people are starting to feel less fear and the weather is getting better and everyone's like let's gather i want to do the things i've talked to so many people in readings that have said the same thing to me um i kind of wish that it that i didn't have to interface with people anymore i i don't mind um, my smaller circle. I don't mind being home a lot more. Um, in fact, I, I like it better. Pay attention to that. Yes, it can trigger any agoraphobia reflexes that we have, definitely, but there's a reason that you feel better if you felt better. Some of us feel this way, some of us don't, and there's no, it's not like right or wrong. This is just is or isn't, but some of us are thriving in a less energetically interactive atmosphere. I know in a lot of ways I am. For example, I find that doing readings virtually for me is me at the top of my game because I don't have to move myself into anybody else's physical energy space. I have the kind of dexterity and control over the energetic input that allows me to be completely present and to really pull out and receive messages in a way that is not as um, is not as effortless when I'm in person, which seems wild and I wouldn't have thought that before, but me working virtually helps me preserve a lot of my internal energy and I don't have to worry about setting up my space ahead of the time for another whole being to be in my space, clearing the space afterwards and all the other things. And that gives me so much more energy to actually tap in and pull through the messages that need to come out. And so I'm able to do my work at a higher level by reducing my interface time. So where in your life is that also true? And how do you allow yourself to keep up some energetic boundaries as we move into this next phase that feel good for you? And how do you learn how to say, sometimes I like to be social and sometimes I don't? And how do you allow yourself to be in that space without feeling guilty, right? Without feeling like, oh, but I, I promised that I would, so I should, and all of those things. We need to normalize um, being really honest about our energy because it's not necessarily about feelings like it's not that i don't want to see you it's not that i don't want to hang out with you it's just that i woke up and on this particular day my energy doesn't want to interface with any people and it's not just about you so how do we normalize that right how do we say okay there are days where my energy just isn't wanting to be around people it's got nothing to do with you and vice versa and we understand that we don't take it personally in fact we honor it and say thank you for honoring yourself because guess what 
whether we realize it or not, whether we've been conscious of it or not, when we are in the presence of somebody who is in an energetic place where they don't actually want to interface with us, um, that's not fun for anybody, right? Ick. So how amazing is it to be able to be very transparent about your energetic needs to get to the point where if you're hanging out with somebody, you know there's nowhere else they wanna be. You know they wanna be around you and interfacing with you and vice versa because you're both incredibly honest about what you need at any point in time, okay? So understand who you are and don't judge that. There are a lot of things that take a lot of energy for me that don't take a lot of energy for other people. And just because they don't take a lot of energy for other people doesn't mean there's something wrong with me that it takes a lot of energy for me, okay? So understanding that and then adjusting your life to flow with your particular needs will allow you to put yourself in such an, a wonderful place where you're not having resentments, you're not having anxiety, you're not having any fears, you're just in flow and you're able to honor yourself. It's so important. So as we move into this opening of energy, of this opening of space, of reconnecting, just be mindful. And we just had this amazing, um, amazing podcast guest, Britta Hamilton, who talked to us for women about our monthly cycles and how we are in a different energy every week out of the month. Find out where you are with that. I've been really paying attention to it. Before Britta, I've been paying attention to it, but I didn't know what I was paying attention to. So now I have words for the things that I was experiencing. But last week was my inner winter and I interfacing was really difficult, you know? And being more extroverted was difficult. As I'm moving into my spring phase, I'm opening up and I'm feeling like I wanna see people, I wanna interact more, and I'm sure next week it's gonna be even more of that. And then I'm gonna taper down and I'm not gonna judge myself. And I'm not going to book a bunch of things. I'm not going to make plans with people that I know I'm not gonna to wanna to do. And I'm gonna fly that way, right? Because I'm honoring my energetic needs. When you honor your energetic needs, you are also honoring the people around you because you are allowing yourself to show up at 100%. When you wanna be somewhere 100%, everybody will want to be around you too. And it just feels so good. So let's normalize that. Let's retrain ourselves with that. And let's show kindness and compassion for others who are learning their own energetic boundaries. As we model this behavior without any angst or cattiness or anything like that, it allows other people to do the same. And so when you're talking to people who are not familiar with this concept, I do think it is really important when you say, okay, I know we had plans to have coffee on Tuesday morning. It's Monday night right now, and I'm telling you, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it because my energy doesn't feel in a place for having coffee with you. Say it that way, and then also say, it's not that I don't love hanging out with you. It's not that I don't value your friendship, and I want you to know that. It's just that right now my energy needs quiet, so I'm listening to myself. I would love to reschedule this. Make sure you say those things because if you don't, all your other empath intuitive friends will fly off the hook and just start spinning around and say, oh my God, she must not like me. She doesn't like me, da, 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 da. Like, what did I do? And you know, you can just cut that right, right at the gate and say, it's not you. Here's the reason why. I love you. I wanna reschedule. I do wanna do this. It's just not the right time. You don't have to make shit up. Let's stop making shit up to get out of obligations because it doesn't help anybody. When you tell a white lie like that, it has a specific energy signature. And even if the person on the other end deeply wants to believe you, there's a part of them that knows 100% that you're lying. So why don't we not do that and instead say, don't wanna do it, right? And it has nothing to do with you. Love you lots. Jean says, I'm right there with you. I appreciate this conversation about energetic boundaries, enjoying one's personal sacred space, small circles and being a sovereign being who can make these choices for what brings us most joy. Absolutely. And at the same time, there are some of us who are very much enamored of large gatherings and lots of people and interactions up the wazoo. If that's you, don't feel bad about that. That's who you are. 
That's the energy you are in and that is okay too. Everything is okay. All of your things are good. It's just important that you know them and honor your boundaries about them. So that's what's coming through for today because as we close out the season, we're entering Gemini season. That's a really different energy. When you go from an earth energy like Taurus, like the naps and snacks energy to the freaking air sign Gemini that's like, hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to know all the things and tell you all the things and did you know this and did you know that and this and that and these two things contradict each other. What do you think about that? That's going to be a lot because it's very high energy. It's really ungrounded in a way that is untethered. So it means that we are going to be bouncing around a lot as we move into Gemini season, which is going to be necessary for what's coming. It makes sense that we would have a shift during air, an air sign season that's a you know, dual personality situation going on. But at the same time, we really have to know where we are and what we need in order to navigate that new space that's coming through. So ground into your body. This is where you live, right in here. So there you go. Um, we're gonna pull a card from the Fairy Force deck <laughs> for, the, for the week. Um, make sure you mark your calendars for Thursday night. We're gonna be doing live channeling and asking about the split coming up in June. Um, I will send out a, or post a link for the YouTube because it'll be on YouTube live or I'll also be streaming on Instagram of doing those two things. And before we hit this card, I also just want to say something because it's really easy to have some things out of sight, out of mind and not to um, recognize when a shit storm is happening. But I just want to touch base with you guys real quick and let you know that there's a lot of shit storms happening around the world right now. A lot of people are in pain and a lot of people are dying. And there's a lot of anger. There's a lot of frustration and sadness and death and pain. And that is real. It is happening. It is not necessarily in your reality though, which is why we can just get up in the morning and pull cards and talk about our feelings and work on these things. It is not your reality. So that is true, but it is a lot of people's reality. And so it is part of the collective reality. And so I feel that I just need to tell you guys right now because we are in this split time and we are still in that underlying Ragnarok Tower energy. That is actually happening right now. So if you can take a moment today and every day, honestly, every single day, when you wake up, just to send out love in your heart to everybody who is boots on the ground in the Ragnarok, in the split, in the tower energy, because some people are living right in the foundation of the tower and that is a violent place to exist. And we can't necessarily do anything about that, but we can send our love and open our hearts and our compassion and bear witness to what that is in ways that make sense for us. And so while I, I don't have a whole lot to say in these live videos about all of the things that are not being reported around the world, just understand that when we get messages that come through that say this crazy energy is here and it's swirling things up, for some of us that means feeling an energetic disruption in our field, and for some of us that means our house is going to be blown apart. So. You never know on what side of that coin you're gonna land. And so it's really important for us to understand that where we are right now is where we intended to be, and that's important and we have a job to do, but there is a lot going on in the world right now that is super chaotic and super painful and super destructive. So sending a lot of love to everybody right now who has family in different parts of the world that are being affected by this and just connecting all of our hearts because when one thing happens to one of us, we do feel that in the collective. We feel that in that interconnected web. So send out love today and every day, of course, but it's a lot of stuff going on. More than, more than we probably could possibly realize. So, all right, let's pull this card and see what the fairies have to say to weigh in. <clears throat> oh, 
All right, we've gotten this card, I feel like, recently. Um, it's number two, it's Dura. And let's see. Okay, so it's number two. I'll post this in my stories. She's all about healing and nourishment. <clears throat> Which I guess makes sense. <laughs> sending you and hi, Guy. Sending so much love to you and Katrian Mwah, and your puppies. It is time for you to focus completely on self nurture and to support your own healing emotionally and in particular physically. This means you must put aside all the excuses you have previously allowed to take precedence over your own well being. Your own personal healing must be the top priority of your life. Seek out a holistic healer, a spiritual healer, and a physical healer and create a well-being program that you then can fully commit to. Allow nothing to interrupt this. Nothing can take away this time you now must give to your own self. Your soul is asking this of you and you must become devoted to your own healing. When you do this, you will find others healed too. That your healing journey inspires others around you to fully connect with their own needs and furthermore allows them to become responsible for their own journey of healing. Healing food must be within your home and your ultimate home, your body. Healing exercise must be undertaken. I'm going to use, I'm just going to uh, cut out the word exercise. I, I just hate that word. We're just going to say healing mindful movement um, must be undertaken. Healing environments are your refuge. Healing people nourish you. Healing thoughts and music and energy support you on this journey every day. Be relentless and merciless in culling anything or anyone who will not allow you to support yourself through what must be done. You must be fully devoted to your own healing and this must take place now. This is from the Fairy Forest deck by Lucy Cavendish. It is one of my faves. And I also feel like I need to tell some of you guys this for some reason, but when we talk about nurturing self-care, I just want to say, feeding your body nourishing nutrient-dense foods is self-care. Losing weight is not self-care. So dieting is not self-care. That entire energy is not self-care. So modification for body standard, uh, for a body standard that is completely unreasonable is not self-care. Being kind to yourself is self-care. Resting is self-care. Eating the foods that your body wants and is good for your body and makes you feel good, that is self-care. So just remember that, please, because la. All right, I will post this card in the stories for you guys. And as a reminder, I'm having a flash sale for the rest of the month on readings. You can get 20% off with code NAPS and SNACKS. And the booking link is in my bio on Instagram. And it's also here on the, the booking thingy in, um, in Facebook, or you can DM me. I'm not sure how many, <clears throat> I'm not sure how many readings are left. A bunch came through last night, so I didn't count what's open, but you can check there. Any availabilities that are open are there for you to take. And as a reminder, private readings are you and me space. I pull a lot of stuff into private readings. We always look at your birth chart. We always look at your transits. We always pull in energies that are needed and whatever you need to help unblocked, nourish yourself, to feel seen and supported. That is what we do in that reading space. So it is just a nice temple where we meet together and we both bring our magic and it's very, very nice. So um, those are posted for the rest of May. I will not have any more openings and the first week of June, I will probably not be doing any readings. So grab them while they're hot and on sale. I love you guys. Have an amazing, amazing Monday. I will see you on Wednesday morning for the midweek update. And I think on Wednesday, we might do some card pulls again. And I will see you then also on Thursday night. Don't forget that live channeling. And I think that's all for this week. I love you. And if this has been helpful, please share and tell your friends. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and follow.